Good morning everyone and a very happy, vibey, bright Wednesday morning to you all. It's uh, The day started out kind of a bit drizzly this morning. There was a cracker lightning storm earlier on. But that looks like it's passed and the sun's coming out, which is awesome. Um, I always, I'm always amazed by, you know, how nature can reflect what you're feeling or what you're feeling reflects nature. I don't know which one. Hey, Carla. Um, guys, you know, we've, we're in the week, we're in a month of, of take action. And we're in the week of, I don't like my hair this morning. Don't like it. Anyway, we are in the week of new beginnings. Right. Um, and guys, I, you know what? I really, I want to take you all back to where it all started. Why we're here. Why I'm here. Why I created this group. In the first few weeks that the group was set up, I pretty much ran sessions on all of the fundamental aspects that need to be addressed when you're ready to change your life, when you're ready to move forward, when you're ready to go out there and really grab what you want out of life. And I think somewhere along the line, hey Nicole, somewhere along the line, maybe you guys forgot that that's why we're here. Maybe I forgot that that's why we're here. I'm here to change people's lives. And why am I here to change people's lives? I'm here to change people's lives because I strongly believe that when someone's life is changed, they then move on and they help to change other people's lives. And those people go on and they change other people's lives and it becomes a ripple effect. And, you know, the, the actions of one person can impact thousands. Each one of you is that one person can impact thousands. So, when you are in the process of deciding, or you've decided you want to make a change, what are the fundamental things that are going to happen? What are the fundamentals that you have to address along the way? The very first thing is, what do you want? What do you want? Be clear about what you want. You know, to, to put it into generally accepted terms, it's about goal setting and it's about having a focus. What do you want? When you decide that, you start moving towards it. May not be the, the path, the journey, the, 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 the steps, the, the bitty bits along the way. You kind of, you may sit there and go, don't really know where I'm going, what I'm doing. If you've got a very clear expected outcome, you always know what you're working towards. It's your why, you know, it's your why. Why do you keep going? Why do you keep doing what you're doing? That's goal setting. That's focus. When you start working towards that, you're going to start hitting roadblocks almost from the word go. Those roadblocks are boundaries. They're the boundaries that have been imposed on you. They're boundaries that you have adopted. And there are boundaries that you've imposed on yourself. Limitations, your own limiting beliefs about what you're capable of. You don't knock those on the head. You're going to spin. You're going to be running around in circles. And how do you address those boundaries? It is about perception and perspective. If you can look at these things, remove the emotional fog, remove what you've always believed about something and look at it with fresh eyes. Look at it in a way that makes you go, hang on a sec, maybe I can look at this differently. Perspective. Perspective, perception. What's your perspective on something? How do you perceive something? And look at that. Now this is not a step-by-step -step process. 
Okay, it's not. But these are generally, this is generally the way it goes. You set a goal, you decide what you want, you start coming across obstacles. You've got to look at those obstacles because what happens next is that starts attacking your self-esteem, your confidence. You start feeling doubt. You start feeling self-doubt. So the next thing you've got to do is learn how to overcome self-doubt. How do you do that? I know how I do it. How do you do that? And then you start going into that. How do I do it? I can't do it. Oh no, I don't want to do it. But I can do it. But if I do that, and then, oh, but, oh, and then there's this. Oh, well, I'll just leave it. Procrastination. Procrastination and overthinking. Your mind gets into a spin cycle and you can't stop it. So how do you overcome that spin cycle? You have strategies in place. You have methods that are proven methods on how to overcome overthinking. How to work through procrastination. Goes back to your solid why goes back to why are you doing what you're doing? Is it worthwhile? Is it what you want? Have the goalposts changed? Do you find that you're in a spin cycle with your thoughts? Do you find that you're procrastinating? That no matter how much you go, this is what I want, this is what I want, this is what I want, oh, I can't fucking do it. How do you overcome that? And something that happens all the way along the next two aspects is grieving to gratitude. Going from that process of letting go to being grateful for what you have and what you've been through. That's a process. That happens every step of the way. But you kind of go, well, why is that so far down the list? Why can't you just jump straight to gratitude? If you've lost a close family member, do you wake up the next day and say, oh, thank God, thank God, without going through a grieving process? Because I guarantee you right now that if you do that, you will eventually get slammed with a grieving process that it will set you on your ass for weeks. So address the grieving aspect of things. Because when you're ready to move on, it means you are leaving the old you behind. It means you are leaving your old life behind. And sometimes that can make you sad. You know, you've been this person for so long. But maybe you've decided that's not working for you. It doesn't mean that you just skip merrily along and go, Woohoo, I'm a new person. You go through a grieving process. If you don't address that grieving process, it will knock you on your bum. And once you go through that, you can switch easily, easily to gratitude. Easily. Because you have let go of your grief. You've let go of your sadness. You've let go of your melancholy. You know, melancholy, that thing where you look back on the sad times in your life and you go, oh, it was so beautiful. That sadness is so beautiful. And you know, sadness does have so many elements of beauty to it. That's melancholy. That's grieving and that's being stuck in the past. And if you're stuck in the past, you're not going to move forward. The last aspect that comes through, comes shining through, right through the process of becoming who you want to be, of doing what you want to do in life, is resilience. Because if you can overcome all of those things, everything that we've just talked about, you know, you've set your goals. You've addressed your boundaries. That's really big. You realize that, that you look at things differently now. You can look at things differently now. You have a strategy in place to look at a situation that you're presented with and come out of it with a very clear idea of what's actually going on. Not just what you perceive is going on, 
What is actually going on? You then overcome self-doubt. It's all part of the process. It happens organically. If you have the right guidance, seriously, if you have the right guidance, and I'll just, again, I've got my notes down here in front of me. So I'm not, you know, I've been writing about this all morning. Um, and, you know, I do come to you guys ad hoc quite a lot. But when it's something so important, I want to make sure that I don't miss anything. So I have got my notes. That's why I keep glancing down. You go through procrastination and overthinking. You work out. You have a strategy in place on how to overcome that. And then you learn that every time that situation presents itself, you have the tools in place. You have the knowledge to work through it. So something that would have taken you months to get your head around or, or something that, that, you know, really doused your spirits for days and days on end, you can look at it and you can flip that situation with radical honesty, you know, using the DARE process, you can flip that in a matter of hours. You can flip that in a matter of minutes sometimes. True. True story. True story. And every step of the way, there is grieving to gratitude and there is resilience. Every single time you overcome one of these roadblocks, one of these aspects that, that, you know, knocks the wind out of your sails. You, you know how to go through the process of pick yourself up and move on. So, how do you navigate your way to success? How do you successfully navigate through change? It's all of those aspects. All of them. And what that all comes down to is confidence. Every single one of those aspects and every single strategy involved in working through those aspects builds your authentic confidence. How's that? Can you wear that one? Hey, Valerie. I personally think that's really cool. To consider that every situation that crosses your path is an opportunity for you to build your confidence. To get up and move forward with more information, with more strength, with more strategies, with more information than you've ever had before. Confidence. Guys. If any of this strikes a chord with you, any of it, let me know. I'm always here. I'm always here. And my focus from the very beginning has been to change people's lives. That focus is not going to change. It's what I'm here for. I realized that quite some time ago. And even though things get hazy and shady along the way sometimes, I bring myself back by remembering that's why I'm here. That is my purpose. Thank you, Nicole. So, if you want to change your life, if you're ready to change your life, you let me know. And we'll do it. Simple as that. Okay. I hope you all have an absolutely fabulous Wednesday. I'm going to go back and keep working. And um, I may drop a meme or two in to the group through the day. Um, and I'll see you then. Have a fabulous day. Mwah! So much love to you all. Bye. Oh.